Hey everyone, it's Adrian Pessel. Today's topic is multiple offers. It's actually an escalation clause part two. Over the past few weeks, I've received several calls and a few emails of people looking for a little bit more detailed reviewing the offers for your seller. I'm going to talk about the negotiations, how escalations clause play a role, and how waivers work. At the end of this video, I'm going to give some pointers for buyer's agents so how they can get their offers to be put to the top of the pile. We're going to do this by using a case study. We have a property that we're listed and it's at 239. Now my house, of course, is the nicest, the best, the most improved than everybody else's. Now I've done my homework and did my comps and everything in the neighborhood have sold for between 230 and 235 because it has more improvements and it's in just better condition. Everything has been replaced. I received four offers on it. One thing I need to be aware of, no matter how nice my home is, I still need to pay attention to what the comps say because unless someone's willing to strike the appraisal or use some type of language in the contract to make sure that this house will go to settlement regardless of what the appraised value is, I need to always keep that in the back of my mind when I review contracts. Now, it's great when you get four offers on a property, but you need to make sure that you gather all your facts before you make a decision and present them to your seller. Because I read through all the contracts, I audit for errors, I check signatures, and I compare the terms to one another. And one of the most important things that I do is I'll call the lender and try to get information on how long the buyer has been working with that particular lender and where they are in the process. Let's look at the value of a lender letter. First things I check for, is it on proper letterhead? When was it written? Does it have the mortgage broker's information, their name, their email, their cell number, and their broker number? I wanna make sure, does it have an expiration date in it? Does it state the sales price? Is it the same as it is in the contract? What is their down payment, their interest rate, and the term of the loan? And do these match the contract? That's very important. When I'm finished with reviewing the letters, I'm gonna call each one of the lenders. I'm gonna ask some questions how do they know the buyer? Do they know the buyer through the agent? What's the relationship? Has that lender physically seen all the documentation, verify the income, the assets, and employment? I don't want this lender to just be using on what the purchaser have said, because what happens if they're partially 1099 and they have a W-2, but overall they say that they make 110, 120 grand a year, but the reality on their tax returns, they only make 80. Especially if I'm in the situation where we can select the best, most qualified buyer. One of the last questions I ask is, when was the last time the lender pulled their credit? Because if this was written 90 days ago, was that the last time they pulled a credit? A lot of stuff could happen between 90 days and today. How we're gonna do this is go through each offer and then we're gonna compare them side by side at the end. First offer is $240,000 with a 30% down payment and an earnest money deposit, EMD, for 4,000. It is a conventional loan, financing contingency, they have an appraisal contingency, they also have a home inspection with the right to void only, and they do have their house currently under contract, but they're looking for a coinciding settlement. They also have a lender letter, the second offer is $240,000 with a 20% down payment and an EMD money of $4,000. Same standard contingencies, financing, appraisal, and a home inspection with the right to void. Escalation clause up to $245 in $1,000 increments of the next highest offer. My third offer has an, a price of $249 with a 5% down payment and an EMD of $2,500. However, you see an orange to the right that they're asking for $9,000 in closing costs. So this net is still a 240 sales price. They have similar contingencies, financing, appraisal, and a lender's letter. My fourth offer is 240 with only a 3% down payment and an EMD money of 3,000. They have a conventional financing as well, but these people have waived the financing for my home inspection and the appraisal. And they do also have a lender's letter. So now since I've gathered these four offers, I'm gonna compare them side by side. I'm gonna go through each one of these topics and compare them to one another to see who ranks best. The offer prices are all here. The escalation addendum, one of the offers have it, to 245 in $1,000 increments. The next term we wanna review is the type of loan. They're all conventional. Contract four is waiving financing contingencies. So in my mind so far, just looking at these compared side by side, this contract, in my opinion, gets pushed to the top. The earnest money deposit we have always valued 
how much are they willing to put at risk, how important it is, and make sure that they goes to settlement because they don't want to lose that money. So if we look at it, the amount of money is similar. They're not drastically different. But really what I'd like to look at is the ratio that money means to the buyer. If I have a buyer here, like in buyer number one, they're putting 30% down, but yet they're only putting a $4,000 earnest money deposit. Now it could be because they're getting their money from a different source. This contract is the same way. They're putting 20% down, but they're only putting $4,000 down. Now, when I look at contract three and four, these people only putting five and 3% as a down payment, but they're putting almost the same amount of money. For them to lose $3,000 is, is a bigger deal than somebody who has enough to put 30% down. Now, I know I'm reading into this, but it's something for you to keep in the back of your mind. Now let's look at home inspections. Two of these contracts have home inspections. They're both with the right to void. The other two are waiving the right to do a home inspection. Home inspection is just another out for somebody to walk away from a contract. And these two contracts with the right to void only, the seller's not going to even have the opportunity to say, yes, I'll fix it and keep the contract going. The down payment, we already talked about that, but we do have a coinciding settlement. They already sold their house and they're waiting for appraisal to happen. That house has to sell in order for them to purchase this house. That's not something I want. And I am looking for the contract who's more likely going to go to settle. Contract three is coming in at 249, but they have closing cost assistance of nine grand. So that's telling me that they need cash. And do I really think my house is going to appraise at 249? We already learned earlier and the comps show 230 to 235. That's a problem, which brings me to the appraisal contingent. Three of those offers have an appraisal contingency. What is the likelihood of me actually getting 240? The most the seller got for a house in that community is 235. I'm kind of risking it. Contract number four, they don't have an appraisal contingency. Here, now we have a home warranty. No warranty they're asking my seller to pay for. Contract three, they want a $500 a warranty. Contract two, they want a $500 warranty. Termite, contract two, they're asking the seller to pay for the termite. Now, granted, it's only 50 bucks or maybe 35, but that's still money out of the seller's pocket. Coinciding settlements. I am not a big fan of coinciding settlements. They are a contingency that lasts up until the 12th hour right before settlement. Because at any given time, if the people on the other end don't follow through, your buyer isn't going to be able to buy the house. So I would not accept a, a, a coinciding settlement in a multiple offer at all. The nets are pretty much all the same within $400. My vote is that I would pick contract four as my best offer. I would sign it the way that it is and know that I have a ratified contract that there's no contingencies. It will go to settlement because I've already spoken to this lender and they've already said that people are strong, they're solid, and I don't have to worry about anything. Another strategy, what you could do is you can counter back some of these other offers to try and see if you can get more money. I am not a big fan of going for another thousand or two thousand dollars and risk losing a buyer to settle with one of these other offers that's not willing to do something or have some kind of other problems that come with it. An appraisal, the home inspection contingency. I like sure things. My sellers are already getting five thousand dollars than the highest comp in the community, a thousand dollars more than what they originally asked for. I think this is the best way to go. But remember the bottom line, it is your seller's decision. I'm going to share those findings with my seller and let them make a decision. I will give them my opinion. Then we will ratify the best offer prior to informing the other offers. What happens in multiple offer situations, the buyers get so excited how they, they want this house, they want this house, they get the house. And then they start having buyer's remorse and they go, oh my goodness, I have this house. What did I do? Did I spend too much money? And they look for ways to get out of it. How you pick a contract when you have multiple offers, who is the one that's going to most likely show up to settlement? which is the stronger offer. It may not be the one putting 30% down. It may be the one to only putting 3% down, but if they have a solid loan officer and they're qualified and they don't have anything to sell and they're excited about buying a house and you accept that their offer the way that it is, they feel that they got a fair shake. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video with some tips for buyers and buyer's agents. One of the first thing I do whenever I get the ready to write an offer is I will call the listing agent 
and ask them, what are the seller's hot buttons? Is there anything that they can share with me, make it more appealing to the seller? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my lender is available to speak with the listing agent. And if my lender is willing, I will ask them to reach out and introduce themselves to the listing agent. We're being proactive and that's a good sign. As a listing agent, I like to know that the lender is available and knows their buyer. Next thing I'd like to do is make sure my buyer's educated on the pros and cons of competing for a home, that they may not get it, that they understand sometimes it means waiving contingencies, it means paying a little bit more for a home than the actual value is and accepting the consequences with that if that's the home of their choice. But I need to make sure that they fully understand the pros and cons and they don't go out this from an emotional standpoint. Instead of waiving contingencies, try using minimums. So instead of waiving the home inspection contingency, how about trying buyer will pay the first $500 worth of repairs? Instead of waiving the appraisal contingency, right, the buyer will proceed with settlement regardless of appraised value as long as the value is at least blank dollars much more appealing to a buyer than not knowing if it comes in and then they have to come up with that extra cash. Lastly, the escalation clause increments. Making an increment in $500 or $1,000, that's really not enough for most sellers to risk going after one offer when maybe another offer has a little bit more of a down payment or they're willing to waive or change their contingencies, whether it's the home inspection or appraisal. If you're going to do an escalation clause and not remove contingencies, Make sure the increments are enough to get the seller's attention and make it worth their while to pick your contract. Again, thank you for listening. I hope you got some value out of it. And special thanks goes out to Chris Perkins for providing the case study. Have a great day, everyone.